Right, so Anthony, I guess one day closer now, the, the clock's ticking down, like what, what are kind of the emotions running through you? Kind of excited, anxious, how, how do you feel? Man, I'm so excited. I mean, I, I just feel so ready for this fight, you know, it's just one of them fights that everything came together perfectly. No injuries, training went perfect. Um, We've got a great game plan and uh, I'm ready to shock the world. You've been like cool, calm and collected all fight week. You seem to be really enjoying yourself. Have you caught any of kind of like Tony's kind of media media stuff? He's been in a bit of an odd mood all week. Like, did, did you see that? Um, a little bit. I mean, I, I watched the embedded episodes just because uh, I mean, I'm a fan of this, obviously the show and stuff. Um, he's kind of weird though, ain't he? I mean, so I think that's who he is really. So I think he's just a weird dude. So um, that doesn't really get in my head. I know where I'm at. I know I'm just in a great spot mentally. And, uh, and physically, I just feel I'm, I'm ready to peak. You know, this is how I felt going into my, my previous fights when I was on that championship run. So I just feel so great right now. What do you think about Michelangelo being his favorite Ninja Turtle? Do you have something to come back with? Is that the best Ninja Turtle of all time? I actually like Michelangelo too, actually. Bro. I grew up watching Ninja Turtles. That was my boy too, so I'm, I, I, I have to agree with him, actually. When was the last time you felt this good during a fight week? Because you do see him a little bit, you know, you're smiling. Yeah, you don't always see him this It's good. been a while, man. You know what? I, I Like I said, I was like, I had to look back and like I was just going through the most of this stuff, man. I was doing these media stuff and I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't like living in the moment. And now I'm living in the moment. And I feel like I just, uh, I'm happy to be here. I mean, I'm excited to be here. Was there a catalyst? Was there anything that caused that change in you? I think just my life outside the octagon. Everything's just perfect. Man. Like, I couldn't ask for a better life right now. And it just, it just shows in my, my performances right now. I mean, I feel like my sparring, I haven't dropped as many guys in sparring since back in the day. I just, it's after having everything. It just feels good. I'm not forcing it no more. Just effortlessly. Was it like that before the Kiesa fight? Because it did feel like you kind of. It was getting there. You know, it was getting there. You know, I think before the Kiesa fight, I went back to my roots. I started doing my jiu jitsu more than wrestling. And, and I addressed the wrestling, not trying to defend it so much. And I feel like uh, that made a huge. Uh, this is confidence booster. You know? I know, I, I, I know I, they take me down. The fight's not over. It's not wrestling. I got to fight them off my back. I got submissions like crazy. I got more submissions than knockouts. So uh, it's just uh, it's all coming together. It feels good. And you, you and Tony obviously a very exciting matchup on the feet, but especially the ground. How yeah. would you compare your ground? Grappling versus his grappling and the way you guys match up in that sense. I'm excited. You know, I've never been uh, in danger in, in, in the UFC yet in a submission yet. I've, I've been Charles Oliveira. He had my back. You know, I've never felt in danger yet. I want to see what he brings. I, you know, I, see, I know he got some darts. I'm ready for him. Um, I'm just excited to get out there and, and test myself, man. This is the guy that's going to make me really show who the best Anthony Pettis can be. He said something interesting during the scrum about him having a thing in his contract where if the main event falls apart, he'll be the villain. Did you know about that? And I mean, I ideally care, everything honestly. works out, but what yeah, do you think I, about I'm it? I'm not even worried about what's going on. My, my focus is on Tony. That's it. If, if, if something happens out of my out of my control, God gave me another great training camp and let's sign me up for uh, the Milwaukee. But what? there's nothing in your contract as well that says that you might be a fill-in too if something they, goes down. They said Tony's name. I didn't read the contract. Signed it. Says <laughs> One of the main storylines, I guess, of this fight is Tony coming back from his injury so quickly. Like, wh what do you kind of think about that? Do you think it's possible for him to actually have fully recovered from that knee surgery? Not mentally. I had a knee surgery right after I fought I had Ben Henderson. Uh, it takes a long time, man. It, it takes a long time to get the uh, the mental back of like checking kicks and feeling comfortable checking a kick. It's not. It hurts. You know, it's, it's different. And then you know how long you get off. You know how long it takes so uh mentally he's not 100 percent but uh i mean tony's a tough dude he's a mexican you know, he's, he's one of the guys he's gonna come out there he's gonna, he's gonna go come out there he's 15 minutes i'm sure he's gonna be ready for 15 minutes is it a target for the fight i know like kind of knee that. strikes in mma aren't always i guess sometimes they're frowned upon aren't they but yeah, I, mean, I mean without without the without the surgery i always attack the legs my, my all of my strikes have a purpose i'm attacking the legs to set up a head kick vice versa so yeah most definitely that's a target Anthony, it seems like you and Tony really respect each other. You've talked a lot about you know, the good of both of you. What do you think goes into that, and do you think that adds to the fight at all? Yeah, I mean, I respect his fighting. I think the dude is a, he's a monster. The 10 fight win streak got some of the best. He fought some of the best in the division. Um, he hasn't fought me yet, so uh, obviously I have my confidence on my side. But at the same time, I got to respect it, the fact that this guy's a killer and uh, it's just motivating. You know, I woke up every day ready to train because I know I'm fighting this week. I know obviously you've been a previous champion, but a guy like Tony on such a big win streak, a scalp like that, what does that sort of get you? How big would that be for your career? Man, one time, wait till Sunday. That's all I got to say. Wait till Sunday. I mean, you guys are all see Sunday. I know. I know you're not looking past Sunday, but um. This Fight, this fight kind of seems to have title implications. You guys would likely be the next in line. But when Conor McGregor did an interview with Mac Life, he sort of said that he looked at Tony and himself. He wasn't really that excited to come back. What did you make of that? I didn't see that, so uh, I'm not sure what you do, do you think he should be excited, though, given that you guys... Who? Conor McGregor. I don't care. I'm not even thinking about Conor McGregor right now. I got Tony Ferguson. I mean, whatever their career path is, I got mine in front of me. So.
Anton, you've had some incredible finishes in the past. Like, is there anything you've kind of been working on or something you've seen in your mind that might happen on Saturday? Just sharpening my tools, man. I already have it all in the tool, but I mean, everything's there. You know, athletically, I never left. It was more of a mental thing that, that, that fell off. And, uh, you know, one little small small mistake like that cost me a lot of fights. You know, I, I lost a lot of fights, very close fights, against the best in the world, you know. I, and I got it back. I feel it. You know, it's just, I just feel I'm glowing right now. I just feel it. Really, it feels good. Uh, the perception of you was sort of that you had fallen out of that upper, upper elite tier, I think. And did you feel that way? You know what? It's a mental thing, yes. It's a mental thing. You know, when I'm, when I'm lost against Eddie and I fought Ed, uh, Barbosa and you know, I lost the win streak, I'm like, I know I'm better than these guys. I feel like I'm better than these guys. I got the skills and uh, you just got to believe it, man. And then I lost that belief a little bit. I got it back. Uh, Tony's considered a really unorthodox fighter. Is it hard to prepare for something like that, or do you almost find consistency in the fact that you're unorthodox? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. I've been doing uh, martial arts my whole life, bro. So I've been doing, I've been just from taekwondo, boxing. I mean, I've, I've cross trained against all of these martial arts. I live in that chaos. That's where I, that's where I shine at. The reason why I have so many submissions is I create the chaos standing. They shoot a double, a dumb, a dumb takedown. I get a triangle. I get a, I get a guillotine. He does the same exact thing. He creates the chaos with his jab. He's long. He's durable. He can take punches. And then once these guys fold, he you know, looks for his darts and, and his submissions. Um, so I think it's a it's gonna be the battle. Who's, who's more comfortable in the chaos? Is, is that what you want? You want chaos? You want us to be a bloody war? You want to you want to go toe to toe? I don't want a bloody right? war. There's no reason for me to have a bloody war. I, I'm, I'm past proving I'm tough. I know I'm tough. Um, I, I want I want to go that I'm class this guy. I know I have more skills in this guy. I have more tools in my toolbox, and I'm as tough as they come. So it's just a matter of me performing. Between the watch and the chain, how many diamonds?